Man, I tell you, I, I got to get back into base. My hand ended up hurting. I couldn't do it much, and uh, that was uh, that that got me stoked again. That track. All right, greetings in the name of the Most High. My guest is uh, Brother Charles Kunita's Ramble Kunita. Uh, as you know, I'm from the the podcast on Spreaker, and um, we're just going to get right into it. God bless you all. We praise God that today we give this day to the Lord. Right. Shabbat Shalom, Amen. and it's a day Amen. of the Lord. Praise right. God. Yes, definitely praise God. What I've seen the last few days, especially the last 24 hours, um, you know, I we started emphasizing that, that, you know, the scriptures that pertain to, you know, letting God fight the battle for you. I don't know yes. what, where I've been the last few years. Because it's, it's, it, uh, you know, I, I don't know what, we have witnessed miracles the last 24 hours. We had some situations that were impossible. And all night I worked out every angle that it could possibly be and couldn't be solved. Can't be solved. So the only thing we could do is give it to the Lord. And it went ding, ding, ding. A bunch of things happened all of a sudden, just, just out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, everything is worked out. Just instantly, and I, I've never seen anything. I'm now I'm scared. Okay, now I'm thinking. It's amazing how our father works. I'm trembling. Absolutely amazing. I'm trembling. I'm. I'm like, okay. I, I'm, I'm now. I feel guilty <laughs> because I should have been more on that. But it's okay. Better late than never. I'm. I'm on that. I, I've got to give that to everybody, that scripture, that the Lord fights our battles. I mean, that was the whole story of David and Goliath. I mean, why didn't we just take yes. that and run with that and just stay with that the whole time? So many of us. Well, are, because we we that, have another nature that tends to uh, creep itself into us, you know, likes to take our ideas and run with our ideas and all of this. We we can fall into a pattern of behavior that, that almost outweighs the spirit within us at times. Uh, especially when we get emotionally attached or involved in something. I know, but it's just so lame. We are so lame compared to God in terms of his ways are so far I mean, oh, you're, yeah. you know, above us, and, and, and he's so complex the way he does things. You can't follow intellectually. It's too complex. The things that fall yes. into place, the things he does on a global, interdimensional, whatever, in and out of time thing, you can't catch it. You can't follow it. All right, so here's one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Yes. Real, real basic. Yes. And um, and then I, I wasted the whole night, about two nights ago, I was just up on, you know, working it out, you know, just feverishly, you know, you know I'd try to sleep and then I'd be like another aspect of the problem. And I'm very kind of, in a way, I'm creative, but I also have kind of a mathematical side to my things and it just was working like almost working a math problem and it's like sure. i could have easily said oh well it's too much uh you, you know it, 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 there were some other components to it too and some other people involved i'm not going to go into specifics it doesn't matter what matters is that it it couldn't it man could not do it but god did and i'm so happy that that happened in real time and we just we all you know the people i'm dealing with we all witnessed it mm -hmm. and so it wasn't it's just always like, a beautiful miracle and we it's all were like when it happens right in front of you and then the other part of that was you know not only do not lean on your own understanding uh, be wise on your own understanding and don't you know god's ways are above our ways and, and his thoughts above our thoughts um the other component is, Lord, if you want me to walk away from anything, I will. It's like that has to be part of any transaction, like God's first. Sure. You know, just any, any transaction with God, it's got to be. And if I'm on the wrong track, please correct me. There's nothing that important compared to you, Lord. You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't really matter what I do or don't do. Amen. Or, or think or don't Amen. think. It's, or, or hold on to some thought or not. I... Just give it to you, for, and it will do whatever you want. And uh, in that kind of submission, I guess, you know, the results are instantaneous, at least, you know, in my situation, instantaneous. And um, 
it's the kind of thing you start laughing at because you just, you can't, you know, you can't follow. It just, you start, like when you start, when you see somebody, an expert in something, either ice skating or playing basketball or playing a guitar or whatever it is, you know how they're all over the Facebook and they have these virtuosos that pop up and you, some little kid playing the drums or something. Uh, and, and you know, when someone's really good at something, you start laughing, right? You go, I can't follow it. That's amazing. You, you laugh. And it's just like. And it gives you joy. Well, it gives you joy, yeah, to know that, you know, that, that, you know, that to see people achieving things, yeah, but, but then you think of God and you just, you just have to look at that. You, you just start laughing like, you know, there's no way any human being anywhere could resolve any of this stuff. It's just, it's, it, he's moving hearts, minds, time, space, dimensions, mm-hmm. people, other people. People in, in office, yes. you know, people with, uh, I remember one time where we had a, a IRS audit and um, it was, you know, they were trying to put us in, in jail and and they wouldn't listen to any of our pleas. Like we wanted to uh, have an extension for the audit, you know, which is normal. But then they go, oh, well, you didn't file it on time yet. No, we sent it in. Well, I lost it. You're going to have to go to court. So you're going to wind up, you know, you're going to wind up in a lot of trouble. So they're trying to railroad us into jail. And um, we didn't do anything wrong. You know, that's the other thing. And, well, this audit, we, we sort of got some kind of extension on that. And, you know, a deadline was coming up. And this was all looming for, and I know it was hard. It was looming for about three or four years, this tax court jail thing. But finally, when it got down to the last day that we could have before things had to be adjudicated, right? When it got down to that last day, and of course, Trish is praying. Trish has more faith than I do back back then. That was a long time ago. And um, and then Trish had said to the accountant, can you have him look for it again? So the guy said, and this is years have gone by now, where he said he lost it or he didn't have it or it wasn't sent in or... He doesn't see it in his office, the, the extension file form. And then he yeah. says, just a minute, he looked, he, it, we pray, right? We prayed, right, Trish? She's out, out of earshot. Okay, so we prayed, and um, then the accountant called um, called up the uh, the agent and said, well, can you just look one more time? And this is now years have gone by, and this is hanging over us like the like the hangman, you know. And he looks and goes, oh, I found it. <laughs> so we got another, yeah. we, we got an extension. We got another auditor. The yeah. auditor um, acquitted us of everything. We owe nothing. We didn't do anything wrong. Everything was above board. Everything was done correctly. And, uh, you know, case acquitted. He did say, I'm sorry your clients had to go through so much grief i know how that must have been having that hanging over their head because you know yeah. if you go to tax court um and then you're found guilty and i mean you you might go in there and say well okay i'll pay i'll work out a, a payment schedule or something i didn't know there was anything wrong or something they could i mean but either way you're winding up like your life is pretty much over whatever life you had i mean it's now going to be either jail yeah. or, or a pay in the hands of the government the government owns you at that point. Yeah. So yeah. he finds it like yeah, not, it was not like a good place to be. It was like, you know, I guess it was like three or four years later. The guy finds it in his office. Oh, here it is. Hmm. It was sitting on his desk. You know, it was. And he just had a crisis. Yeah, it was. He had a crisis of conscience. He he didn't want to keep up the charade anymore. He he'd like, well, I can't do this to these people, you know. And, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. another auditor, and um, like I say, we were set free, <clears throat> and it was all the Lord's doing. Huh? Yes. 100%. And um, yes. that was one of those things, too, where my mind was totally blown. I was like, wow, that's really something. You know, you know, I said something the other day on one of my podcasts a week or so ago that the one word that keeps coming back to me again and again over this relationship and this walk of mine with the living God is astounded. Mm-hmm. And, and I am astounded repeatedly 
by the things I see him doing in my life and other lives, uh, things that would be considered impossible. Uh, my situation just six months ago, when all of a sudden I found that I was losing my house, mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden within a week became uh, a place for twice the size of my old for a fourth of what I paid for it within what I could reach and attain. And within a week here, I was in a brand new place. Uh, wow. And it was all worked out by God. You know, it just popped up on my Facebook page and that Facebook marketing one day. And I saw it. I clicked on it. The guy said, yeah, it's available. I said, I'll take it. And I didn't even have any money when that when I told him that. I said, I'll have it for you by Monday. And sure enough, God put it in my hands by Monday. How far away? It, it was an amazing thing to watch. How far away was it from where What's you? That? How how far away uh, is it from the place you lived in? About ten miles. And that's nothing. That's perfect. Yeah, and it's ten miles out of town. That's even better. Uh, they were getting ready. They were building a new jail about three miles from where we were, and <laughs> a new apartment complex all around it. And the right. whole place was becoming someplace I didn't want to be anyway. Yeah, and once I, I my say. parents moved, then it was time for me to go. So, so I'm, you know, God worked this all out, and 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 all my worries and all my plans and all of that turned into a hill of dung. You know, it was worth nothing. I, you know, I just turned it over to God, and He took care of it like it was no big deal. Uh, and like I said, I was astounded. Uh, I'm still astounded when I get up in the morning and look around me. Uh, I'm astounded when I when I pray in the morning when I see the sun come up. Wow. And I understand. The, you know, the bottom line, Zeph, is every day is a new creation. Every day in the living God. You know, that's what uh, the physicists are beginning to tell us with, with, with all their new theories. That we project our reality. Our reality comes upon us as we step into it. Mm -hmm. And God is recreating us and all of it as we move with him. And it's an amazing thing to watch. Yeah, and that's what we, we kind of forget. It, it, it's things seem set in stone, but every day is a new fluid day, a new fluid reality of God, a new creation. It, it's really true. Yes. It, it, each day does not succeed every other day. Every day is different, and I have noticed yes. that. And and it's like um, I don't know if we just could. You know, I guess the the real thing here is if we could just see this. Because I know the mistake that's made is when you say, well, I'm giving it to the Lord, but you don't. I'm yeah. gi giving it to the Lord, but I'm not willing to change my lifestyle. I'm not willing to change direction. I'm not willing to let go of something. You know, it's, it's, yeah. and, and then, and then you don't get an answer to prayer. I'm, I'm trusting God, but God's, yeah. God's not answering my prayer, which is usually I'm, 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 I think I'm trusting God, but I'm really not. I'm really grieving in my own heart and, no, I'm, you're not. and I'm worrying and I'm keeping away God's blessing. And, and then, then it's like, well, why would God want me to suffer so much? And the answer is, um, God doesn't want anyone to suffer so much. That's, that's, we're projecting that onto God. And I think we need to approach the Lord. You know, we need to maybe take a look at ourselves in the mirror, you know, no matter how, screwed up your situation is um we do have something to do with it when we approach god and we plead the blood of jesus on a situation how we behave and what we hold on to or let go i mean we need to come with open hands and many of us just keep holding and i mean i'm guilty of this myself so it's not like it's not oh, like, we're all guilty of it too. right so it's not like we're all guilty of it and and i see the times i have been blessed and it's always been open-handed. You know, I'm willing to walk away from everything. Every, whatever I got going on, it doesn't, you know, if, no, no matter how much I thought I loved it, I don't care. I just want to be with you, Lord. You know, and then, and then the prayer. Yes. And then, you know, Jesus said yes. something about it. if you got a dispute with your brother to get that, that, those kind of disputes and things, or you might have litigation out there and all kinds of, you know, the Lord is not really uh, into litigation, you know what I mean? And, and those kind of fights we get into. No. Because they become vengeful, and then they block God. You know, basically, if you're in a fight with your brother, and that's all you're thinking about, a fight, and you want to win the fight, and you pray, Lord, will you please smash this guy's head in? And, you know, he's an yeah. asshole, and he's, yeah. you know, and, and then and then <laughs> nothing, you know, of course nothing happens. So yeah. so then some people are, get so angry then they they and they feel so weak with God they turn to witchcraft. Well maybe this'll get them. 
And so that, that anger, that envy, that jealousy, that, that, you know, I mean, the Lord is just like this. I, I am a jealous God. You put anything before me, you put anything, any of your little things, anything you want to be a rock star, you want to be a, you know, astronaut, or you want to, you know, you want to be one of these big celebrity type guys or anything. I just, I really, you really want to go on a vacation. I don't even care what it is. You really like your toothpaste and you want to use that toothpaste and you, you worship that toothpaste, whatever. Some silliest things can be. Um, he's going to smack it. He's going to have to have it. Whatever it is you fancy, music maybe, uh, uh, movies, I don't know. I don't know what people fancy anymore. Flowers, whatever it is, he's going to have to have it. You know, I'll get back to God later, but first I want to really decorate my house and really make it so something I'm really, yeah. it really blows me away. Wow, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, I want to uh, live first. I'll, oh, God. Yeah, oh, I'll oh. get back to God later. Hi, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just I just did this whole, wouldn't it have been better if you said, Lord, how would you do this? How would uh, you go about uh, decorating this place? I mean, what would you do? Would you paint the walls? What would you do? I'll tell you what. You tell me what you do, and I'll do it. And then, you know, that, that would be, you know, this is just coming from a couple old guys here. <laughs> you know, if, yeah. you're, if you're in your 20s and you got it all full of uh, passion and drive for your goal, you might want to rethink that goal. We do a lot of this stuff that's crept into the, the so-called Christian community because of the churches right. that are around. They've quit preaching the truth about reality. They've quit preaching the truth that we must first be attached to God before anything else yeah. will have any meaning in our lives. You know, they quit preaching the truth about the vanities of life. You know, I posted that scripture on vanity of life, and I put a picture with it. It was a picture of nothing. And probably almost nobody understood what I was trying to say. What I'm trying to say is unless you are first attached to God, everything you do, everything you feel like you've accomplished, everything that you, all your priorities are as nothing. Because without God in it, that's all it is, is it's nothing. And we see that across our society today. Uh, Look yeah. at these goofballs that are out running for president. Come on. <laughs> you know, well, it's been I kind mean, of what we see, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a culture of wannabe Pied Pipers with an antichrist spirit trying to build their own stairway to heaven on our backs. Oh, yeah. And and they're convincing Evil. us to go along with it. No, the people that go along are absolutely and the dumbest people that have ever been born. But that was all by design because you get stupid when you get, you know, when you start going that way. The first thing that goes is your what? What? What are we? Uh, we uh, Trish has got some news. You got some news, Trish? I, I want to get. No, it, 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 I was like, there's a delay. So when he said, uh, I see. All, look at all these numbskulls that are running for president. I just went, yeah. Okay. All no, right. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I'll, you've I'll you've you've interrupted the flow. That's all right. <laughs> You're in trouble now. That's okay. Okay, but the thing is, good morning, Trish. Is, yeah, she's uh, she's going back to her spot. I, you know, she she's like it's like the typical producer um, speaker situation. She's in her area monitoring the show and then you know and setting it up and then sure. I'm here. We we kind of you know we work well together that way. We've been doing it for years and it's now we're starting to do more talks. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to. Govinda, I want to talk to, I like to talk to Patrick. I like to talk to people, Amelia and, you know, people on a, you know, on a one to one basis and sort of then get some other people in here too as, as the Lord leads, as the Lord leads. I just know there's something sure. today. There's something we're talking about today that's going to make a change, I think, for us all. And I think you hit on it already. It's like, this is a prophetic thing. It's like, what is reality? And a lot, oh, of, yes. a lot of the prophets yes. of, of old would take time to explain what reality is. You know, whether it be Ezekiel or, you know, and they would explain it and uh, this pleases God, this doesn't, this is how God made the firmament or this is, you know what I mean? And, and the Lord is this kind of God. And, and so if you go that way, this is going to happen to you. That, you know, just lining up the, 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 the landscape and that we relied on these Old Testament prophets of old 
to kind of give us a, a landscape of what God would and wouldn't do and what we should and mm-hmm. shouldn't do, you know, and what reality, basically they like, they outline what reality is. Then they get more yes. specific about the nation and the warning the people you've gone astray, this will happen to you as a collective. But first they're giving the kind of the lay of the land and, and, you know, uh, you, you get like, especially in Isaiah and, 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 um, you know, you also get it through action, through story. Like, for example, Jezebel sending the, the, mm-hmm. you know, the 50 and the 50 and the 50 to get Elijah. And, and you see the result of, 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 of idle, you know, witchcraft and idle, um, deceit, uh, idle violence on a ch- child of the most high God and that protection. And it kind of teaches us, you know, what, all about God, all about the way it works. And so I think here we have a, a, a thing where our society has lost the concept of reality. And it's, it's, I know yeah. it's funny. I know, I know it's fun to laugh at this stuff about, you know, and I've marveled at, I wonder how stupid people can get. Like, uh, you know, I don't even want to go into names. I just, it doesn't really matter. They just, whatever talking clown they have up there. And you wonder, how the people could actually be duped by these idiots saying these idiotic things like, you know, saying like, uh, I don't know, there's like, there's alarming people, there's people dying. And here we are not talking about what's really going on. And it's all fake. It's just, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not even appropriate for the, for the discussion. It's like non sequitur almost. It's, it's, uh, the scripts are not lining up anymore. And, um, so they go out and say this stuff. When they build any kind of wall, we're going to tear it down. Uh, we don't need walls. We need everything open. And, and I'm going to make sure that old people and veterans are the first to be euthanized. Yay! You know, and they cheer it on and, and they each try to outdo each other and just how ridiculous they can be. And the most ridiculous yes. clown of all had been, I guess, Joe Biden saying that, you know, I touch people and, uh, I'm sorry if it was inappropriate, but that's just me. I'm a warm human being. And the audience, and, yay, run Joe. And I'm like, I'm living in. I hope they nominate him. I, I think Donald Trump will make a fool out of him. Oh, yeah. Plus, Biden has one of the, Biden is known for a vicious temper. And Trump will go after him and he'll get that goat. He'll, Let me tell you. He'll trigger he will it. He'll make a fool out of Biden. Yes, he will. And I, he'll do it on purpose because that's just what he does. Well, no, he try, you know, Trump and, is. And, Trump's vindictive. He's uh, he's uh, he's a counterpuncher, and uh, if Biden tries to pull any of that stupid garbage that dribbles out of his mouth, that people somehow lap up as reality, uh, Trump will hit him back with facts, facts about well, you know, yeah. about what happened. How about how about shovel ready jobs? You know, remember that <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. sent Biden out to yeah. talk about. I mean, you know, it's 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 just a clown show. Whether it's Obama. Uh, Biden, any of them, it's a clown show. But and, and people get mad at me when I say, you know, well, Trump's not in that same club. They're, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a Zionist shell. And it's like, well, if they weren't going after him, if they weren't putting a million subpoenas on him, if they weren't trying to throw him and his family in jail, I might believe you. But see, the persecution part doesn't line up with what people are saying, you know, at least on the internet, thinking that everybody's bad and, uh, you know, they're waiting to be picked up in the rapture usually. And, um, I would say that, uh, I don't know, for me, it's, it's, um, I I don't really think much about escaping. I'm just kind of trying to see what I can do here about reality. And I'm just wondering, did our generation, all these generations get more stupid or is the stupidity a judgment of the Almighty God on people that have turned away? It's yeah. a spreading, Zeph. It's a, it's a fulfillment of one of those prophecies that you, you were talking about, only this one's out of the book of Zechariah. Okay, let's, let's hear about there's that. There's a curse. There's a curse mm-hmm. that Zechariah proclaims. And let me go ahead and get to it, uh, Zechariah, it's in chapter 5, the very first part. I don't usually give the verses out of my show because I always like people to go look it up. I think it's a good exercise, but uh, we'll be easy on them this morning. It's early. Okay. <laughs> so right. Zechariah, he said, Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and I looked and beheld a flying scroll. And he said to me, What seest thou? And I answered, 
I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Then he said to me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on one side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. You know, today, if you said something about Zechariah's curse, most most believing Christians wouldn't even know what you're talking about, because this has been dumbed down by the churches, because all the preachers have said, this is talking about every liar or every day thieves, which would apply to all of us. And we know that that cannot be real, so the whole prophecy is kind of put out. That's not what God is talking about here. What God is talking about here is the original lie mm. and the original theft. God is talking about Satan and the followers of Satan, those who accepted his lie, and his lie right. was that we could be like unto God. Mm -hmm. And the theft was he was stealing the glory of God. And people say, how can we steal the glory of God? And I say, we are created in him, his image. We are the glory of God. And we are the theft. And all of those who have given alignment over to Satan, who have accepted his lie, all of them are a part of this curse. Right. This is what Genesis is talking about in Genesis when, when the sin. He's not talking about the eating of an apple. He's talking about the swallowing of a lie and the corruption that that brings within us. And over the years, this corruption has molted and mildewed and, and uh, filled mm -hmm. the houses of all of these. And it builds up an ever-increasing instability between that internal image of God that still is within us and the complete assimilation of the lie in which the culture we live has done. And when that comes forth, it gives forth, gives birth to a reign of madness and terror mm -hmm. that will consume everything that it claims to love. And this is what we see happening today. This is the generation that was talked about in Proverbs. Right. These are the people that are running for office. And these are the ones who are consuming you in their lies. Right. They all hate God, too. So it's, 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 it's amazing. And the people just can't understand that these people are trapped right. within their own sin now. And they can no longer get out. They're held captive by their own disobedience. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't, they don't you know, it. yeah, unfortunately in the United States, we have doubled down on evil. We've doubled, we are worse now than any yes, time in, in my lifetime. This is the worst, worst people and worst behavior, but the worst people I've ever seen, uh, have come up and, and again, celebrating, you know, afterbirth abortion and really celebrating is until you've had an afterbirth abortion, you haven't lived. Some of these people are saying celebrities, these spoiled brats that come out and uh, they just dictate to everyone how they need. If you if you if you stand up for life or anything, you should be thrown in jail or you should be killed. Uh, do what thou wilt. It's basically they're preaching the antichrist. Do what thou wilt uh, shall be the whole of the law. You know, Aleister Crowley. They're teaching yes. the same thing the Beatles were teaching. The same thing that um, they tried to push in the late sixties with uh, uh, tune in, uh, turn on, and drop out. Remember that? That was nineteen sixty eight, sixty seven. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> the Love Ends and the rock concerts were just an excuse yeah. to, get to, to get all the fornication going indiscriminately, kind of kind of coming out of the uh, 60s, the, the Playboy generation of the early 60s and late 50s, you yeah. know, the sort of tiki-tacky, kind of like back back uh, where all the martini babies came from, you know, the backyard yard barbecue with the martinis and then... Oh yeah, it's every 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 man woman yeah. for themselves, and then they wonder where the babies came from. Okay, so that was going on with our parents, or with my parents anyway, and um, and then that morphed into this sort of counter revolution, uh, musically, culturally, you know, the hippie generation and all that, which was really a thinly veiled um, uh, disguise on pushing the Antichrist agenda. That's all it, that was. And LSD, yes. LSD was to... It was a repaganization. Right, right, exactly. That's all your head shops popped up and they all had like 
the goddess mm-hmm. the goddess stuff and books on witchcraft and all your yeah. your new age bookstores popped up new age teachers the deepak chopers of the world they all popped up and you know everyone's got to be oh here's another one you all have to and god warned against this you all have to be vegan because you're hurting the earth if you eat cows or if you eat uh, you know if you oh, yeah. have meat Okay, so this is the same thing. Yeah. Hitler was pushing this too. I mean, this is like I can't believe it's a redo and nobody knows it. Go ahead, go ahead, Kanita. That's why we've been dumbed down so that nobody would see it because otherwise you couldn't miss it. I know. Maybe it. Maybe you almost had to live through that period of time to understand the very fundamental change that happened mm-hmm. between uh, sixty one, sixty two, and yep. sixty five, sixty six. I mean, it was an incredible time. Uh, and exactly, of you, you the got fascination of yeah, yeah. You got it nailed there on the time. Yeah, the sixty-two was like it was like the wholesome, you know, the Beach Boys, Jan and Dean. He, yeah, so, you know. The, but here's what I look, look yeah, at: is like Four Seasons. Yeah, different all kind of music. Songs were about hot cars and your girlfriend. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then it all of a sudden you had you know the the whole complainer thing. But I think what was happening is the veil was being because remember. Back in those days, in the days of our parents, you know, they were as much into the satanic. What it really is, is they were all having it under the surface. They were all joining up with that. And then later, the kids came out uh, up front with it. And it all became one big satanic ritual, one big induction. And when I say ritual, I mean a formal initiation point. They would do that initiation through Dianetics, through, through, you know, Scientology, through certain religions and cults in Los Angeles, were really just another bait and switch operation to get people hooked up. Uh, it was a big push to get everyone oh, yeah. s- signed up with uh, the devil. That's all these little programs. Oh yeah, none of them. None I of them. I used to get mailings from places like the Rosicrucian Order. And right, right, right. All these kind of stuff. I, I, oh, same oh, thing. Yeah. I, those were heady days for those people. Well, it was all about expanding consciousness and about you know it was all about self improvement. All these things were just thinly veiled programs to lead you into Satan. And um, because it's all about self, it's all about selfishness, right? It's all about you improving yourself and you, you know, you doing better. And many of the rock stars, because there was so much money they were making back in those days, they never made, no musician ever made the kind of money they made. And um, so they would all beg the devil to give them a, a spirit or a demon that was the best at guitar, let's say. And they would pray yeah. to Satan to give them that power so they could get on stage. And And I, I was watching a clip of... Um, uh, the. <clears throat> I wonder how many remember the movie Crossroads by Walter Hill's Crossroads. It was quite a good movie. It had Ralph Macchio, remember the karate kid in it, and Steve Vai played the, the, the expert guitar player, yeah, Steve Vai. He played the guitar guy that was so good, the devil's own. And it was all about, you know, selling your soul to be a good guitar player. And the crossroads was that crossroads between God and the devil. And would you, the question posed by the movie, and they had this clip on, on Facebook just in a video. It's really quite good. But they had this, uh, yeah, wouldn't it be nice to have movies like that today that actually posed the question, showed the result, showed how, you know, evil fails? So, um, Basically, it was like this guy, he was like a karate kid all over again that Ralph Macchio played this character that, you know, was good on guitar, but not like the real flashy Satan guitarist. You know, they really had it. And they had all the power of Satan. And they were just like, when they would play on stage, and people know this, they're like, basically, not just Pied Pipers, but they're leading people into a certain beat and groove that will, and, and they're, they're, they're leading them into that same spirit that animates them. I yeah, mean, that's they're all leading they... them into a spiritual contact. A spiritual contact right. is what they're, where they're leading them. So concerts, yes. concerts themselves, again, were like thinly veiled, yes. um, you know, uh, satanic rituals designed to conjure yes. the demonic, and people go along with it because it felt good. It felt good. I've been you to these. You could even good. call it a worship service, perhaps. It's a worship. Even it's, call it a worship service. Perhaps. It's a worship service. The rock concerts were worship services, and um, then eventually rock faded out. But I mean, 
uh, there was that other period where it was basically telling people, you know, again, with all these album stuff is like, do what thou wilt. Then we had another generation coming after that with the, sort of with the Marilyn Mansons and people like that, making more of a clowning kind of mockery out of it all, sort of a cartoon out of it all. Same message, uh, you know, um, you know, hate is good. Uh, love is bad. <clears throat> um, uh, you know, and again, then it goes to the cheapening of life that do anything you want to do. doesn't matter what you do. <clears throat> you know, if yeah. you have to murder somebody, go ahead and murder them. Who cares? It, it kind of got, and then it went to death metal. Then we went to then death. Went to death. That's metal. right. To That's kill right. yourself. There's, there's no purpose to life. Just and let it end. You know, that was my, yourself. and I think that hurt my and daughter. Yeah. My daughter is really into death metal. And, uh, she went through, you know, light periods and dark periods, but that was definitely like a dark period. I talked to her about it. She would, you know, we would talk about all the different metals. She was like an encyclopedia of metal. And, and, and it is. So it, it, it's a very, it's, it's a very big deal among the younger people. You know, I, I, I do, I've seen and heard it. Yeah. It, it, it scares me. It's why I quit listening to rock. Uh, once it, it kind of made, you know, the, the rock and roll that we listened to kind of opened the door. Mm-hmm. And uh, they accepted everything after a certain point, and and what they've done is corrupted a couple yeah. of generations of our culture to uh, where they don't even see the relevance of God in the world anymore. And 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 it's not that they're angry or ignoring God; they just don't see it anymore. They but, can't see it. It's, they've been blinded to right. it by the culture. Right. So then they vote, and then they sneak someone out there on the stage sometimes during these concerts, where they go, you know. Yeah. You have the right to have your own body and to do your own thing. You know, vote Democrat yeah. or whatever. So they always sneak their yeah. political thing in there too. So oh, it's now, yeah. now become not just a ritual. Uh, you know, and, and I saw, I was, you know, and we were attending a, a you know, a, a, a semi metal sort of hybrid band thing in Albuquerque and they finished up their set and then they wanted to get the house rocking and, and they started with this beat and I could see what they were trying to do. I could, I, I mentioned this story before and I've just, I want to go into the specifics, but, uh, we just prayed it down because there, we didn't, we just, you know, we'd been through the concert. It's like, you know, it's all right, but it's not worth losing your soul over. You know what I mean? It's not worth becoming possessed. No. So they were trying to possess, and no. I know why they do it because when the crowd gets possessed, then they get energy off it. Like, like it's like a heroin, sure. a shot of heroin or something. They sure. get a big rush. Sure. And then I want to get, come on, sure, let's go, let's, let's go. And they went and they take all the audience is giving, 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 and they're giving up on themselves. They're becoming this amalgam of just one consciousness and the artists are, Oh boy, that feels good. Let's, let's tear this place down. Let's burn it down, baby. And, um, and then of course it's later on. And I'm not trying to be like a stick in the mud on this. I'm just saying. It, it it's going on. It is what it is. I'm sorry. It's not some side thing that's like uh, you know immune. Uh, that that's just uh, uh, you know safe. Just like uh, going to see a football game or something like that. It's it, it really that really wasn't the purpose. Um, anyway, then then that led the way to uh, you know kind of a revival and then the Seattle grunge thing in the '90s and then it kind of like. Rock was out pretty much after that, and then it went to uh, more to the hip hop and pop, where it's been since, I guess, since around the, you know, I've, I'm not the best historian, but I would say around the 2000 time, it's been more um, pop and, and hip hop. <clears throat> and again, and a lot of the messages in the pop and hip hop have, have, are, have morphed into, you know, again, if we had a satanic Bible, if we had, you know, all these right people were educated, they would recognize the messages in this music uh, that's going out to the young people, young teenagers and, 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 and preteens that's going out to them to, to um, you know, go up against their parents and up against their parents' values and be free, be their own person, pushing, pushing every kind of uh, abomination known as normal. And, and yeah, if I was, like Paul Harvey said, if I was Satan, I would do all this stuff. I'd break up the family. I'd push this music. I'd have pornography everywhere. I'd have, you know what I mean? I would just make it one big pleasure dome, right? So I guess the ultimate yes. debate comes into, do we address the pleasure dome and risk being 
persecuted and 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 or, or do we shock it i mean obviously doing nice songs and television shows and movies being nice about it doesn't work i think they need to be punched in the nose with just as just yes. show exactly how ugly they are which you know i i'm not against showing uh violence and perversion and every other thing as long yeah. as as long as you know in the end it just shows that uh good you know and why good wins over evil and why selfishness self indulgence self aggrandizement self worship um and everything this culture pushes about selfishness really it's selfishness uh, uh, narcissism selfishness self love self uh, boosting uh you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Because the big program is, if everyone gets in on that, then they'll be amenable to the structural Satanism, which uh, they don't understand, but their parents are part of, right? The kids don't realize. Once once they get in there, they go, oh, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Yeah. I didn't know you were here. Yeah. Well, Grandma and Grandpa are here, too. Oh. Then I better grow up. Right, go get a job. Yeah. Get you know, it's okay. We got the great law firm for you to work in. We got a, we have a whole path for you. It's real easy compared to everybody else. I don't see. Here's one guy told me he goes, he was getting a twelve million dollar contract for some engineering thing or something. Some big, you know, some acquaintance that we were acquainted through a charity. Uh, and I, I go with him. He's getting mad at me. He's just about ready to pop me in the mouth. You know, he's really just so pissed off that I brought the, the spirit I brought into his home, house. <laughs> and and <laughs> so we're down, we're down there at his office, and he's getting a fax. It's like a $12 million deal. And he goes, you see that? I don't know why everybody doesn't do it, <clears throat> which was a direct, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and I'm like, um, excuse me. Sure, excuse it was an assault on you. Well, yeah, he, he tried to use that contract. To be, you know, you don't have a $12 million contract coming through your fax machine. I'm like, are you really that petty? I mean, are you really that far gone that you would ta attack a fellow human being because he's not really into worshiping Satan to get a $12 million? I mean, that's fine. You worship Satan. You have your charity event to get to allay your guilt. Uh, you get your contract. And then if anybody is just standing there that's not on the same page you're on, you beat them up. I, I predict uh, this man is listening, which I doubt, but I would love it if he is, Lord. <laughs> that if you don't straighten out that backwards attitude and that lousy uh, point of view and that abomination that you are, you don't turn that thing around, you're going down. There'll be no more contracts. There'll be no more anything. Your friends will kick you to the curb. Don't worry. There'll be another guy coming up. He's going to make sure you're a TKO, okay? And then you're going to be looking around trying to find oh, yeah. find your ass with both hands. You won't be able to do it. I'm sorry to be so vulgar, but I mean, you're you're going to be just like so many people I I've seen. Type. I've seen so many of these yeah. people, and and they're at the end of their careers, and they're and they did it all Satan's way, and they're looking for help, redemption, something. And but they can't even let themselves do that because they still the guilt comes back, the shame comes back. Mm -hmm. The feeling of worthlessness comes back. Like you didn't really earn that. You never, you know, you had some help. Yeah. It's like Obama. You didn't earn that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You had some uh, help, uh, you know, witchy, witchy help. And, you know, all the wives are witches. All their, their housekeepers and maids are putting spells on them too, trying to steal what they have. It's just, um, and this was, this, this took place with the gentry of Silicon Valley. I was actually there for a day. We couldn't go there for two days, but we were actually there amongst them. And we saw Silicon Valley in all its glory. And um, it was dead to dead, dead as a doornail. There's no life. Yes. It was like watching a room of the dead. All these guys like were the head of Cisco and the head of politicians and the whole gang up there in San Francisco and I went to Stanford University and then, you know, it's just big giant ballroom full of people. And um, the whole place was on the same page spiritually, i.e. dead. And, yes. and uh, you know, I, it's, I always like to tease Elon Musk. You know, I always tease him. I just say, 
So you got a new tin can going, huh? Cool. It's going to fly to outer space. Wow. You know, that's that's awesome. When do we get beyond the tin can? Uh, I, uh, I'm the cutting edge of everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, those batteries, they're doing better and better. You're, we're electric now. Isn't that nice to be roasted with uh, electromagnetic waves that give cancer? Isn't that lovely? That the batteries in your car can give you cancer. Lovely. Anyway, it's okay. I, I'm sorry. I've, I've gone on. But what do you think, Charles, <laughs> about... I'm sorry. I, I've digressed and I've gone on and, and I've got Charles here, so I want to... I want to get with you on where this thing is going. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, this is where we have to go today to the kind of a prophetic conversation. In general, where do you think this is going like in the I, 2020 uh, election? What do you think is going to happen? I think the Democrats are seriously going to overplay their hand. I think they're going to make uh, as many mountains out of as few molehills as they can, and they're going to they're going to, in the end, they're going to truly piss off the Trump supporters, and they're going to bring them out of the woodwork like never before. Mm-hmm. I suspect it's very possible that they'll lose the House. Uh, I think it might, especially if, if Nancy Pelosi loses control and they actually do articles of impeachment. Nothing will fire up Trump and his supporters more than that. Uh, even though there's there's no crime, there's no anything, these people, that the mere fact that they're searching trying to get his tax returns okay. when there's no underlying probable cause. You know, they have no right to that unless there is a suspicion or probable cause of a crime. It's like any other search warrant. Mm-hmm. There has to be that probable cause, and they don't have that. And people are seeing this. They're seeing after how they're going after this man. Because, see, the reality is, you said those people needed a good kick in the ass, and that's what, they brought, that's what God brought Donald Trump here to do. And Donald Trump is, is, is a world-class ass kicker, I think. And he's going to do what he can to straighten this out. He's trying the very best he can to return us mm-hmm. to some kind of stability. And I believe he will be moderately successful in the, in the economic and the foreign affairs. But I think Donald Trump is just a blip. I think he's a lot like Ronald Reagan. I think that... Uh, when he is gone, they'll try to undo everything he did just as quickly as they possibly yeah, they're can. Already, they're already taking and his rep, yeah. They're, with the character assassination, they're already doing, they've gone, done oh, everything yeah. they can do oh, every yeah. day to, to ruin him. What do you think of all the, uh, subpo- yeah. the subpoenas and this total onslaught from, uh, you know, of, of potential indictments from the Southern District of New York, Chicago? I guess we have uh, Washington State. He's being sued by a hundred different, by, I think, He's being sued by, like, I, I may be wrong on this, but 25 states are suing him for the state of emergency. Yes. Um, wh- who, who, are these, who are these people that live here, They're these pussies? These, 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 people, these people that are doing this are trying to prevent Donald Trump from stabilizing the immigration situation. They want this influx, and it's not just to... It's not just so that they can uh, have these people as potential voters. They want them to destabilize the entire system. Mm-hmm. They want it on overload. If you get masses of people coming in, eventually uh, the wages are going to start going down. Standards of living are going to start going down. Oh, absolutely. These people won't mind because even, even a reduced American standard of living is still miles ahead of where they came from. So they'll see it as an improvement. And you're going to see a gradual shift and a gradual turning in the uh, in the entire politico of our of our country, uh, I suspect within thirty years uh, you will not recognize the United States. Yeah, it'll just be like a, a third world country, banana republic, um, squalor in the streets. Uh, back to we dirt, might, we dirt might roads. be a little bit better than that. We will have areas of wealth like China, but we'll have vast areas of poverty that nobody exactly sees. exactly flyover country, so to speak. Yeah. and and that's what it'll look like. And uh, the only way to get from one area to the next, from the poverty to the, to the wealth, is to make that deal with Satan. That's going to be the world standard. And that's, that's where we're going to get to. And uh, the Antichrist himself will be the one who uh, finally makes it all work, at least for a very short time. Yeah, and the Bible says, and we've got it, we're, boy, the book of Revelation is really getting our attention now, because, I mean, it looks like it's a, you know, yes. the playbook, right? <laughs> so it says that, Anyone that doesn't worship the beast, which I, I imagine means refuses the initiation, right? 
anyone who doesn't worship the beast is killed. That's what it says. Yes. So, you know, for many the- will, many will die. You will see, you will see this turn. Initially, Zeph, you know, they'll try and come after the people who make the most noise. And right. it may be some of us who are on air and all that, but basically the true believer is going to be protected and covered by God. Amen. It's going to be those in the church, those in the official church, where they're going to hit. Because you and I, we have nothing. I sit here making it, you know, I earn a decent living, and, and I sit here on my computer, and, and, and I speak my piece, and I do that. But I don't have that many listeners. None of us have that many listeners. A thousand, two thousand. What is I don't, that? Three hundred fifty yeah. million population. Collectively, we but have the church. Collectively, though, the, all the people speaking, whether they have five hundred or two thousand, or you know, sure. they, they don't have forty thousand. They don't have a hundred thousand. But collectively, if you add it up, it it comes out to one big broadcast. You know, so it. I think we all do our yes. little. Our, we all do our little part, but God keeps us hidden. If I know if if the Lord pushed me out. And because there's a lot of things I can say that nobody has said yet, you know, that, that, that it would be cutting edge and new and, you know, I mean, it won't be as disgusting probably as where we are with uh, elites eating children. I mean, that's kind of like the, 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 that's now the, the cutting edge of, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy all that's come out because I struggled with that and, and you know, I felt yes. like, I felt like the, the world is a pedophile network. The world is preying on children. The world kills anybody that disagrees or anybody that that, that uh, starts squawking about this stuff and back in my day you know kids got killed if they didn't get along with it they just got yeah. killed they had acts and in fact their yeah. own friends would sacrifice them learning how to sacrifice people is a big part of sure. their of their religion and getting away with murder so that starts young yes. and i was surrounded by that and then gang stock because of all that i mean just had a horrible time just trying to be a normal young person a normal adolescent i they they just wouldn't let me and you know they they just you know they take people that i guess would be more pure-hearted right people that don't see the 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 deal they throw them in mental hospitals pump them up full of drugs ruin their reputation and then they're derelict the rest of their lives that's what these assholes do these people that have these positions of power it was felt that was made on me and that, that, that was that, the kind of assault that was made on me. Yeah, but see, you like so me. I understand where you're coming from. But like me, you didn't have any place to go with it. You you had to just take the punishment no. and eat it. And now look, it's all coming out. All the things that all the stuff they pulled against us, which we never thought would be adjudicated or never thought would come out into the light, it's coming out. But the way they're handling it is they're saying they're trying to normalize it all, and <laughs> you know, normalize killing children beginning with the... Uh, well, what they're going to do eventually is blame it all on the church. You see, the church has more than just a body of believers. They have, they have wealth. They have power. And that's what these people want. They want to steal that wealth and that power. Right. And they're going to turn on the church. And what you're going to find is these people who thought they were going to be out of here, you know, in la-la land somewhere before all of it turns bad, those people are going to wind up filling the death camps. Those people are going to wind up being the tribulation saints. They're going to pay for all their foolishness in this life. Right. And it's going to be to the end of this life. God will find his people. He will build his church. And if he has to build it in the death camps, by God, that's where he's going to build it. And let me tell you, the gates of hell will not prevail against them. Right on. And I can say that with certainty. I, me too. I agree with you with certainty. I, that, that, uh, these tribulation saints will be worth their salt because um, they will be uh, they they will be tried by fire, tried by death, yes. and and in so doing they will be martyred, and in so doing they will then have earned they will have earned their place though though they're covered by the blood of Jesus they will have earned that's right their acknowledgement as they will have undone the curse and by by their martyrdom they will be uh, made worthy to to submit to Jesus. In other words, I can say I submit to Jesus and they say, well, I don't believe you, you know, yes. but these people, when they say I've submitted to Jesus, they'll say, I believe you. Cause you just took the guillotine. I believe you. It's a difference between, it's a difference between a mental ascent 
and a spiritual experience. You see, we can all say we believe in Christ and, and, and dance all the dances and say all the right words in a church and make everybody think we're holy as all get out. But unless you've had that personal experience with God, mm-hmm. you really don't know what it's all about. And that's where that's going to happen. They're finally going to be broken down. They're going to be where we were, Zeph, where everything is gone, where they have nothing left to fight with. Yeah, that's, what, that's And they have only God to turn to. And that's where that's going to happen. That's the whole purpose of the tribulation is to bring God's people home. I had one person just say like to me, in, in, go, ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I had someone say to me that some years ago with his F report, he was trying to convince me that I think to be, you know, better to be a tweener, you know, like, uh, you know, to, to, to you know, make it a little easier on yourself. And, uh, you know, between two things, you know what I'm saying? And, and, um, you know, I, I, I and then, then later on he said to me, you know, if it turns out the, cause I said, well, you can't do that. God won't accept that. And then he goes, well, if it turns out the way you say it is, I'm going to commit suicide. So he, I guess he believes that he keeps on as a tweener. He's, he's good as gold. Yes. And you can't, it's got to make your mind up. You can't play footsie with the devil, take the benefits therein, and then run back to God and make everybody think you're this uh, saint, uh, but but you're unwilling to take persecution. And this guy was just unwilling. He was unwilling to be, to take persecution. He was unwilling to take criticism or to be, you know, falsely accused or, uh, you, you know, what happens to a lot of us is we get... Uh, they bear false witness. They make up stuff. I had a lot of that in the beginning with the Zeph report, uh, less now, but in the first 10 years or so, there was just stuff all over the internet about how awful, you know, they just like, you go, who put you on this smear campaign? And I, I saw one that had me as a level six operative or, you know, I want to get into that in a minute about the, the tie in with all the uh, intelligence agencies and stuff. And then Trish was my handler. And I've, all these things were coming from bona fide. I remember those things. They, well, they, they came. I remember. No, they came from Christians, though. That yeah. war, warning the other Christians that, and 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 no, it's not over. They're going to do it again. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, back that, in the no religion east today. Well, yeah, and I also, you know, I mean, I brought it on some on myself. I I wrote, wrote a potty mouth book, and you know, and 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 see, here's and here's the thing that's so strange. You know, the book was an honest book. And I've thought about it over the years. I mean, I quit writing. I, I got so uh, not intimidated, but I thought it's not worth it. You know what I mean? It's like can't yeah. fi- find an audience because, I mean, the, the Christians don't want it. And the worlders, they don't want it either. So just it's it's so I'm just like, you know, out. And then I realized, oh, wait a it second. Scares them. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's nothing wrong with that book. The book in the middle of the book where... Satan comes out and tells the reader, don't listen to the narrator that, that's a serial killer guy that's under the control of the CIA, right? Doesn't that sound good? You'd like to see that, right? But you stink it. You stink around and look at stuff like that. This one has every, this one is totally Christ, completely anti-Satan, totally. And they, oh, it's a potty. How could any Christian write something like all these F words and all this sex and all this? And it's like, you know, I'm going to do it again and even worse because I am so sick of this. They intimidated me from my gift of writing. Yes. And all these years went fallow because they didn't approve of the truth, calling themselves Christians and being liars, all of them. That's why I don't pay any attention to most of these people that have Christian broadcasts, you know, they, they ask me about it and say, no, they're just liars, you know? I mean, sorry. Yeah, but I listen and I like, okay, go ahead and listen. But these are the same people that launched these smear campaigns. Yes. They wanted to knock me out of the Zeph report too. Well, anyway, they can't knock me out of anything. Because then I went and did music and they said, well, if you listen to a Zeph Daniel tune, you are possessed and you need to be delivered. That was another one that was going around. Rich Keltner, uh, yeah. 
brought me up on that. He said, yep, that's what they were doing. I'm like, well, you can't expect me to be friends with these people when they pull shit like that. Sorry to put it that way. But that's it's all right. These are the same people that told everybody in the Gulf that the Gulf was dying and you should move out right away. Oh, yeah. You know, and how many people did that? You know, I mean, yeah, you you can't watch these people. How many? These people. I, I got caught up in it for a little while. We all do, you know, because you can't listen to what the church puts out for very long if your eyes are open and you see the real world but you know you have to find something and well, that, so we all get caught up that same guy in these things. that same guy that put that cock out you know that guy never repented plus he used to say in the beginning back in 2002 if anyone speaks anything against the 501c3 church they're a divider of the body of christ but that that didn't go so well for him so he dropped it but he started down that road yeah you know, defending society, defending Satan, basically. And people to this day That's don't realize, they don't realize uh, that Antichrist spirit. They don't, they, no, see, they go by what's on the surface. Uh, you know, you did this, you you did a horror movie, and you did this, or you did that, and you see, that means, and these people are so stupid. They're so stupid. They're so stupid. They're so incredibly stupid. You can't, it would be almost child abuse if you if, if that was your parent. It would be one of the worst nightmares of all, having one of these things as your parent that goes around, you know, pointing at, oh, look, it's, it's moving, it's shining, uh, that's evil, uh, that person's evil. And they just echo what society wants to do, and they become the policemen for society. Then they say, they're separate in yes. Christ. They're separate in Christ? Yes. Uh, when they lie? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I sound like, now, what's her name, that Octasio, Octasio, Whatever her name is, Cortez. She goes, I don't think <laughs> Cortez, so. Yeah. We're sitting out here dying and we're sitting here. I don't know what we're doing. You know, these people are starving and, and we don't even care. We should be fee. You know, they, they want to go and, uh, they want to build a wall. I don't think so. She says, I don't think so. Oh, and, and I go, I'm looking around and I'm not seeing laughter. I'm, are you taking this seriously? The Green New Deal, which is basically the, the Satan Satan's manifesto and the Church of Satan, and this is a witch. You can't see that? How long have you been walking with the Lord? You can't see who's a witch and who isn't a witch? Well, where's the discernment? You don't know who's real, there who... There is no discernment, Jeff. Who, who's real and who isn't? Are, is me, me and... Uh, are Kunita and I uh, for real? Or are we just really pulling the wool over their eyes? No, I know. I know what I've done wrong. It's not. It's not anybody's fault. It's my fault for reacting the way I did. I should have been pushing it, and I let it push me around. But uh, I still have some time to live, so I'm going to start pushing it again. To hell with these people. To hell with them. I, I'm so yeah. fed up. You know, they, they're worse. I, I'll tell you, I got along better with the Satanists and witches and stuff. You know, we had kind of a, you know, we, we, we knew there was tension between us, but we kind of understood, you know, and sometimes, you know, a hug to another human being can help break them out of it. You know, we, they were much more normal, you know, and we all knew there was a line there. So we all knew that, you know, they couldn't exactly say what was on their mind and I couldn't exactly say what was on mine. We all kind of kept our powder dry. Um, but you know, with the Christian, with these, I don't know, mind controlled slaves is what they really are claiming to be Christian. Yes. They, um, yes, they were so much more evil because they would wreck someone's character, put a bad reputation out there on somebody. And they say, this is God's will for this person being so disobedient and I tried to warn them. I tried to help them. And look at the sorry condition. Look at how they've fallen. You see, people? So you better, in other words, listen to me. Donate to my website, and I'll tell you who's for real, who isn't. I mean, I saw so much nasty, dirty crap out there that it would make a Satanist blush. I saw the yes. most evil people I have ever seen in my life as Christians. I saw the satanic ritual abuse in the church, gang stalking in the church, 
pedophilia against youth groups in the church and everyone covering it up and being quiet about it. And then if you had a criticism, they would actually murder you if they get away with it, you know, if they, if they could get away with it, make it look like an accident. And that's the state of the American church. That's the state, and that's why the big judgment of God, it's coming right here. The big, big smackdown hand of God, it's coming right here. This is going to be front and center of God's total. It's going to look so unfair. I mean, just mowing them down. And it's going to look so unfair. How would God, this is a God-fearing nation. Under God, it says. How could God do that? Because this is the home of commerce. This is the whore of Babylon. You go, well, the United States is not mentioned. Yeah, the United States is a whore of Babylon riding the seven-headed hydra. This is, the United States is that whore. That's what we are known as in the spirit. They say, well, America is not named specifically. Yeah, because we're the seat of commerce. We're the we're the we're the, the the throne of power, not Netherlands, not you know the Hague or the not the not the EU. It's not in Europe. You know what I mean? This is that it's wherever the real seat of commerce is, which is you know obviously Wall Street and Washington. We're the most powerful mm-hmm. nation on the earth. No other nation qualifies to be the whore of Babylon. No, not not even close. So no, we are mystery Babylon. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And, uh, you know, I was all for, I like the idea of making America great again. I can live with both. But the proviso is America can't be made great again unless America repents. And the way it looks to me is the last two years, it's gone right down the toilet. People are more arrogant, more selfish, more disgusting than they've ever been here. And they become the stupidest people, dumber than a box of rock, dumber than any kind of measure. You know why comedy doesn't work anymore? Because you have to be semi-intelligent to understand a joke. Even if they're yes. sat- satanic type. I like comics. I like comedy. I'm a you know, big fan. I don't seek it out much you know, anymore, but I, I'm a big fan because I always think these comics, they're so smart and so witty. You know, I love how they turn a phrase and you know, they just have a lot of um, courage to get out there on the stage, just them and a microphone. And... Um, so I've always been fascinated with comedians and comics and you know different people like that, but you know what? And they're they're having a hard time right now. They they can't. They're not. They're, the revenues are way down. And you know why that is? Unless it's something like I don't know, approved of by uh, you know uh, what's his name, Jimmy Fallon or something. But but it's not like it used to be in the old days. We had the comedy clubs and all that. It's not like it used to be. So here's the thing: the reason the comedy though the level of it has gone down is because the people don't understand the jokes because they're not smart enough to, to follow. The that's people right. don't understand. Right. I mean, that's what, last two years, the people don't understand these brilliant, the most com- comedians are brilliant. And so they don't, they can't, they, they just can't, they say the joke and then nobody laughs. <laughs> you know, and, and it is funny, but you have to be semi-intelligent to get it, and they're not. So that's what happened there. Well, it's, it, it is. It, the, our, as a society, the, our, our being dumbed down is, is merely a symptom. What, what is happening is, as a society, we are being consumed by our own sin. Right. We have been consumed by, by the theft and the lie, let's say. You know, we have run for thousands of years on the blood of innocence, on the sacrifice of children. Mm-hmm. You know, wars and tyrannies and untold suffering is the only fruit we've seen. And now, as yeah. a people, like I said, we have been yeah. we have been held captive to our own sin, and we cannot find our way out. And there's only one power strong enough to break this, and that's the power of the living God and Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen. And unless we as a nation recommit ourselves there, uh, Zeph, I think that the best we can hope for is is delaying actions to, to the final consummation of the end. I think that's what we're looking at. I can't see any, any other alternatives before us unless we fall on our knees as a nation. And well, that's going to take a movement of the we, Spirit of God. They're, they're now openly talking about after-birth abortion. I mean, it's gotten worse the yeah. last six months. 
Yeah, it has not gotten better. Yeah. Of the, we we're not making yeah. America great again right now. Okay, it's it's going off the cliff. It's, it's the Satan in it, Satanism within him driving him crazy. They want to hear the cry of the baby to make them feel better. That's right. You know, to give them power. That's right. That's right. It's not enough that they kill it in the womb where they can't see it. Bring it out, and we can watch the blood flow. We can hear it cry. How much fun will that be? Oh, they, God, they, what a world do we live in? They like doing it. <clears throat> These abortionists, they love doing they abortions. Do? They love doing abortions. They do. They do. They love it. They love going to work every day, and they love, you know, cutting up the body parts and shipping them off to whatever, and uh, they love hearing the baby scream. One woman, she goes, you know what I do is, you know, just a, a tip for you other abortion doctors, you know, cut the uh, vocal cords. That way you don't have to put up with the screaming. Oh, God, it's, it's almost making me sick just thinking about that. I, I, well, we are the worst there is in the world. We're the worst the world has ever seen. Uh, we make Sodom and Gomorrah look clean. <laughs> yes. So it's going to, it's coming That's down, man. You can't be having like that idiot Virginia governor who's still there, by the way. You people of Virginia, I wouldn't be, yeah. be surprised if it floods and you all yeah. drown in a flood. Out in West Virginia, at least. I mean, y- you've got a guy there that needs to be pulled out. I don't know, law enforcement, somebody, and thrown in the brig. Gone. Done. But if you leave him there, oh, my God, it's on you. All you citizens, it's on you. So when don't start complaining with the hurricanes and the rains and all this stuff. Don't, don't you dare say a word. Because the reason you're going through this trouble is because this guy went publicly out there and he said we make the baby comfortable and then we have a talk between the doctor and the uh the mother and if it's the mother wants to to have the baby alive we resuscitate it and if not we kill it pushing after birth abortion when it's not even legal pushing it and that's who you elected as governor what do you expect what the hell do you people expect you're going to get yours. I guarantee it. You're going to get yours right in the yes. teeth. You're going to get your teeth knocked right down your throat. You're going to watch your children die because you want to kill babies. Yes. So what goes around comes around. You got children, you better re- really protect them. We break out into a war here. And I do believe Yes, I mean, if it break- I do believe God's about to bring judgment upon us. I do believe that. I I don't necessarily think we're going to have a nuclear war right away. Uh, although I think that will come. I think my basic thinking on that is I think that the Antichrist probably needs a digital revolution in order to uh, maintain his control, and so a nuclear war would destroy that. What uh, kind of? Even though it might not be. You know, what kind of a person? I, I'm looking for natural disaster. I'm looking for natural disaster. Okay. Uh, almost unprecedented. Almost on an unprecedented scale. Uh, you know, something like uh, dare dare do I say it? An earthquake in the nine category on the West mm-hmm. Coast mm-hmm. that would uh, perhaps you know resonate down the West Coast. You know, the geology of this country is laid out in such a way. We, the central part of the country is what's called the Craton. It's the, it's one of the oldest land masses in the world. It's, it's billions of years old, they say. But around the edge of it is, uh, accumulated land. And all of these faults are on that and they tend to go down one edge of the Craton around the bottom and up. And something like that could completely destabilize the United States as we know it. Uh, by the residual earthquakes and that could come. And that's, that's what I've been seeing for, for some years now. And it just, mm-hmm. it terrifies me. It, it, it scares me to death, but I think mm-hmm. it's going to come to that because, uh, because of the willful disobedience that we see among our people today. Well, Look at the people uh, out on the West Coast uh, and yeah, some of the things uh, they're doing. Worst ever. I, I mean, I, and I, and I'm, you know, I've been uh, kind of a historian of this for a lot of years especially with that 60s revolution to today and this is the wor- this is the worst by by far quality of people i've ever seen in other words people with no morals no um no conscience no nothing they just 
want to kill the babies and go celebrate and they all want to be, you know, stars and they all want to have, you know, they, they want to get the pedophilia going and they uh, want to sell their children into uh, slavery and, you know, there just isn't any point to keep them alive. I mean, it's just it, that once you go that far, no. what what have you become? What are you? Just basically uh, you consume, yes. you eat, you, you, you fornicate, you go entertain yourselves. You look at yourselves in the mirror. You you worship yourselves. Where where where? What does God get out of that? You know. Well, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're warning them. You know. And I'm not telling anyone to move out of anywhere. You know, I almost think it's a sin to move. So I'm not telling anyone. Oh, to no, move. I'm not calling on people to move. No. Nope. God will protect His own. God will cover His own if He needs to. I'm not worried about that. But uh, it does. You know, it does shake me, the level of depravity that we have fallen to. You know, when I was a young man, I would never have believed things would have gotten like this. Uh, I grew up in a lot different, uh, a lot different world than you did. You know, I grew up in a, in a protected family environment. I, I grew up almost in one of those old world families where all the aunts and uncles and grandmas and cousins and everybody lived within one block and we were all surrounded together. And so it was kind of a protected, different kind of lifestyle. Right. But, and it almost seemed innocent to me as a child. But when I look back on those days, and, and, and uh, I, can, I can hardly believe that it's the same lifetime. It, it, it's like two different lifetimes entirely, two different nations. Uh, the things that were accepted as absolutely normal in 1955, 56, down through those days, mm. uh, are not even existent today. Right. It, it, it's a whole different manifest. It's a whole different paradigm. I guess that's the word I was looking yeah. for. And uh, well, the threat of world. I have a great deal of trouble living in it, to tell you the truth. Yeah, no, I, I have I, trouble I... existing in this paradigm. I have to mm -hmm. stay out of it. You know, I, I wrap myself in in my children, my grandchildren, my my ponds, my gardens. Once I get them started, whatever I'm doing, I wrap myself in the moment. Because God is with me there in that moment as I do, as I pray, as whatever I'm doing. And I let the world go because otherwise I couldn't cope. You yeah, know, I, I don't right. read their news. I don't watch their news I, shows. I've, I don't. Yeah, I've had to back off too, you know, because yeah. I, I don't need a weatherman to tell me which way the wind blows. I can see we're going right down, you know, down, down, down. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's amazing that uh, in this state of up here and, and i do attribute a lot of this to trump that that god brought him as a disruptor and the disruption has brought all this to the surface you know it was there in the 50s it was there in the 60s it was there in the 30s and 40s sure. they they have literature about this kind of thing going all the way back to the depravity of man underneath the surface though so on top you've got like yes. you, you know a a uh, you know um Oh, oh God! Just the name just escaped me. Who, who was the guy that did the Americana paintings? The really famous one. They were, they were. Uh, you know, oh gosh, you know who I mean. That's you probably forgot yeah. that too. Okay, well, you know what I mean. It was like that's the surface, you know, or I like to say Disneyland is the surface, yes. and then underneath there was this underbelly, and then now, I think what Trump has done and his personality and his galvanizing, you know, sort of the, the these forces. Has brought the everything out of the woodwork. Everything that was there that was hidden yes. has been brought into the light. Uh, Rock, That's right. He who blew finished? away the cover story. He blew away the cover story. Right. He so sure did. <laughs> so so that's that that's the wave that we've been riding, and he did get you know rid of ISIS and all this other stuff because ISIS was just John McCain, you know, it was John McCain and Obama, and basically the deep state guys were running ISIS, which I I had the proof and I proved it, you know, I proved it and I got yawns. I actually proved it. I showed the dolly shots. I, so, I showed the professional um, studio that was that studio that I showed was in England, by the way. I showed the Pentagon, how they paid that company in England $500 million to produce these be ISIS videos, beheading videos and stuff like that. I showed the Jihad Johnny uh, composite where they filmed a part of the action in, in a soundstage. And then they were going to have an actor come in to finish the action that was on a green screen. And uh, basically they put the desert behind the guy. It was completely fake. 
Uh, I showed the costumes of the uh, ISIS in Afghanistan, all out of central costume. I, I, I did everything I could to let people understand this entire thing was a wag the dog operation with a lot of good people. I even showed the fact that there were producers and directors and, and, and uh, you know, and staff and, you know, uh, production assistants, and all those involved in beheadings, actually filming beheadings and murdering like 30 people, you know, having the kids take the gun and shoot them all. The kids had the same costume on their costumes, at, you know, all made for yeah. that photo opportunity. And those people really did get killed. And the people that shot it all really are in the film industry. It was, instead of being fake, it was live. Now, I don't know about you, but that's the sickest thing. I've, I would love to, I'd love to do a, a story about that one day, you know, like a, you know, I'd yeah. love, I'd, you know, but there's so much to write about now. So people say, well, why are you so violent in your writing and stuff? It's all, oh, you, have, you have no idea. I've, I've just begun to get violent. I, you don't even know violence until you see the next things I write. Because why? Because I'm going to show people what we've become. I'm not interested in these milk we toast kind of Christian movies that go out and, 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 and you know, and, or, or books or whatever that go out and, and, and paint a world that doesn't exist. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see that movie unplanned. I'm going to keep hoping that they, but I'm, see, I'm not that guy that's going to conform to their standards either. So, oh, I'm so mad now. I just can't believe it. <laughs> I'm mad because I, because I let these Christian bullies push me around and stifle my creativity. And, uh, and and I, I didn't understand because I had never been in a church or anything, you know, so I didn't understand th- why they would want to do character assassination. I didn't understand that. And so it caused me to stop writing my books, you know, and uh, anyway, it's okay. It's all right. I, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know what the heck to expect. You know, I was just trying to tell the story. Well, of perhaps, it. perhaps not writing opened up your podcast to speak to people in a way that. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't hold back. Have done in the writing. I never held back in the podcast. <laughs> so, you know, I never, I never, you know, I never short shrifted them. Some, some things I kept to myself, but it, it didn't matter anyway. You know, it wasn't something they needed to know. But because uh, some stuff I just yeah. can't talk about. I mean, I, there's some things that people are so sick and so disgusting that there's no point in even going on about it. The Bible even says, you know, to to not talk about such things. I mean, we have talked about such things, but there's a line there somewhere where, I mean, if somebody is like, if if once people start getting into all the scatological stuff of pooping and peeing on each other, which they do in their rituals, at that point, I don't think we need to really go any further with it. I think that just shut the book right there. You know, I mean, once they get to, it's a, it's, yeah, so that's all a part of the theft of the glory of God. It's, 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 it's us, you know, doing those things, putting excrement on our bodies and things is a, is a way of defiling the glory of God. That's why they do these incredible things, these disgusting things, because right. they're trying to defile that image that no matter how they try, it's still in them and they can't get rid of it. And it just bugs the living shit out of them, you know? And they just can't help it. But what we've got to realize is that these people, as evil as they seem, you know, just as I've said before, that we were created for the time we live in. So were they. Oh, really? They yeah, were created I, I, to go all the to way. To be what they are. And that's why they can't see the light. That's why they can't see the truth. Because they were created for the lie. Mm. And to the lie they will go. And, and that seems like a simplistic way of putting it, but it is the truth. You I think know, I think Satan has his children, and God has his. Well, they're not Satan's children, though. They're the Satan has usurped these children. Has tried to. I understand s- that. Yeah, scalp their souls and convince them that that's right. They believe the lie. They swallowed the lie, and because they swallowed the lie, the truth that was in them is corrupted to where they can never see the truth again. No. The only the only chance they have is the blood of Christ. That's the only chance. Of course, hear that's that? the only chance all of us had, but still. You hear there that? There's no other option for them at this point. 
the blood yeah. of Christ. How many years, Zeph? You, you, you talk about your grandfather a lot, and, and, and it's clear that you loved him very much. Oh, yeah. How many years was he in the midst of all of this? And what was He it? was bad. He, broke his <laughs> he was bad. Yeah. But and he, it, was, it was the blood of Christ that came through your testimony. Yeah. The testimony of your life. Yeah, that's what made him change. It finally set him free. Because nothing else could have done it. When I survived the onslaught and the being suicided attempts and all that stuff, and and after that, he just like he he had enough, you know. He he couldn't watch that anymore, and and so we had a reconciliation. But he gave his life to the Lord. He was. I tried to explain that he was um, completely, totally forgiven. You know, he all he did was just follow what other, everybody else did. He did what he thought he had to do to not be in poverty. That was basically. What motivated him, and he, and he went overboard. <laughs> you know, he, he, yeah, <laughs> to say, to put it mildly, but at the same time, he he thought during his life, if he was really charitable, he could make up for what happens, be, you know, behind the scenes. And um, you know, and he also became a thirty-three degree Mason and all that, because that's what you did. You joined the Masons if you want to go up sure. in society. So he did all that, and. Um, just like a lot of other people did, and he uh, and he had his repentance, and I witnessed it, and I was happy to see it because he was, you know, mean to me for at first, you know what I mean. But then we became like bonded, you know what I mean. And he just was wanted to make sure that nothing happened to me, like uh, by he couldn't protect me though. But I mean, he wanted to to, to help me out and. And I, you know, that was his repentance. He, 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 you know, he quit doing whatever he was doing long before he died. But I mean, he was doing good works. But it, he, I think he realized that doing good works and, you know, not killing your grandson and things like that, <laughs> that's not quite enough. You know, the Lord's going to want his heart and his mind and his soul. And so he, he gave that up too. But I mean, it was, it was a, a journey for him. And I was happy to, uh, to, to, to speak of it because I had one, you know, out of, out of everybody, that was the one person who seemed to understand what was going on. And what he told me to do, he'd always say, keep going. That's what, that was his word to me. Keep going. <laughs> yep. That's what he said. Yep. He, he wouldn't say he, more than that. He's a great testimony, Zach. He, he wouldn't say it's more. It's a marvelous testimony. It really yeah, is yeah. That, 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 well, that he could come back from that in, in, in the power of the blood. It, it's a marvelous testimony. Yeah, and he he became athlete. I mean, he thought, you know, I mean, I guess he thought the Catholic Church was, you know, they had to really get into the Catholic Church because he really felt that was the way to salvation. But that was his way of understanding. You know what I mean? He wasn't really a, a very deep thinker in philosophy or you know, you know, whether the church is corrupt or not, he just thought, well, God must be there, so I'm going to go there and be, yeah. be a part of that. And, that, and that's fine. And they were, uh, I think that's, in the end, what really, uh, I think a lot of people in Los Angeles were really pretty much, you know, seeing that. I think they knew on some level that was going on. The worst thing that people did out there, you know, around, you know, and I'm saying like around the, you know, the movie business and the all the business. There was a lot of um, aerospace business out there and also military, you know, like Raytheon and, you know, there's, the, you know, you're at Boeing and you had all that, that whole military industrial complex out there too. It was all just concentrated in one area of Southern California in the desert. And it was kind of like... um I think people were really surprised, uh, you know, in his case, that he had, you know, wanted to do the right thing. You know what I mean? Kind of like he backed away from that his group or whatever and headed out on his own. And and they, they really, um, they couldn't understand that. Then you'd sit around with these old people, you know, and they'd be talking about the weather or they'd be talking about, you know, so-and-so's golf game and and uh, or the lo local restaurant that just opened up. And seriously, they didn't have anything else to say but that. But see, that's what happened to them over 40, 50 years, sure. right? Where they conformed to stupidity. They became stupidity. Yeah. They acted stupid. They had stupid children. And they don't know, you know, you know what from Shinola either. 
And they just basically learned to talk baby talk. They talk baby talk. Yes. And that became the extent. And they think they're intelligent. Oh, no, they're, they're the most. They, my, what do you mean? My son's at MIT. My, my granddaughter's at Stanford. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah you learned it. Yeah, you could be in Stanford and learn and, and, and be an idiot. It's very possible. <laughs> you could be it's there. It's actually very likely. <laughs> yeah, but you, you could learn to jump through. You could jump through their little hoops and everything. The whole point of Stanford, St- Stanford's only there for one reason, and that's to conform the next group of leaders to society. So they get out in the various arenas and, and corporations and politics and whatever and carry on the wonderful tradition of our wonderful oh, world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're there to groom yeah, people. I, I, went, yeah. <laughs> I went through that, Jeff, when I was in the, uh, in the church. You know, I went through all their educational systems, the Bible college, liberal arts college, into the seminary. You know, I was... Uh, I was going to be a star for God, you know, and I knew just how to do it. I knew the right ass to kiss, and I kissed it very gently. And, and <laughs> that was the way you moved up. In, in I understand. Kind of I, and I, I, I tried myself you know, to. And, and it's just the same, you know, in the church, out of the church. It's all oh, it's the roots all the of power, yeah. the roots of control. The church is, is, is the greatest system of control Satan has ever discovered is religion. And he uses it uh, religiously, I guess would be the best word. But... Uh, and I understand how that world works because I was in that world. Yeah, uh, now it's it's and really. It wasn't until God smashed me beyond recognition that that world spewed me out, and I praise God for that spewing because uh, God knows what I would have been had I stayed there. I mean, uh, yeah, certainly uh, I wouldn't have been. If you grew up in the mafia, the Sicilian mafia, you know, in New York City, let's say, it you turn out to be a pure heart, like a lamb in a family. They send that kid off to, to, to become a priest. Little do they, they send him off to slaughter, yeah. but the idea was they don't keep him in the family and kill the kid. They, they send him off to become a priest. If they, they realize he's not going to, you know, he's not going to go along with the murders and the, and the extortion and the, uh, racketeering and all this stuff, then, then they, you know, they give him a chance to do something else. They don't do that in, uh, in Los Angeles and in, the, the, yeah. the, I'm talking about the Italian mafia. They don't do that out in you know regular <laughs> society. No, like oh that kid, he, yeah, uh, pulled up lame. Well, you know what we do to horses, don't you? Yep. Okay, let's make yeah. it look make it look good now. Okay, we will. Uh, and nobody, hey, you gonna be at the soiree at the club tonight? I'll see you there. Oh, that kid was so troubled. You know, he just couldn't help blowing his brains out, you know, and, and, and it was a real burden to his family. I think now they're going to be able to get down the road. They got two brilliant little children that are going to be, they're already out towing the line. They already know what's going on. You know, we have to make sure these kids know what's going on and know what's expected of them or else, you know, you know what happens. But it's all good. It's all a wonderful world. Uh, look at all the opportunity here, more than anywhere else in the world. And then when you really look at it, and you look at, well, is there an opportunity for freedom in America? The answer is no. There is no opportunity for freedom. No, no because every no. vector, every vector is, has these rules, which are given by Satan. So where is the vector where, okay. where it's okay to be free? Well, you can be homeless and be free. These are things that bother me, you know. I mean, this, this, and this is the thing I do in my art, whatever form it takes. I go with this, with this thing that's grinding on me right now. I'm going to go and make a story out of that, and uh, and then and then the Christians are going to say, you know, burn him at the stake. He's a heathen. He's a uh, heretic. No, I know Jesus. Well, <laughs> the only people we burn at the stake are people that know Jesus. Everyone who's Antichrist, are, they're the priests, and they're the congregation. And if, oh, yeah. you, if you love the Lord, then we're going to burn you at the stake and call you a witch. How's that? There are no vectors of freedom in America. Boom. Greatest country the in the world. The only freedom anywhere, Zep, is in, the only freedom is in Christ. And you're free in Christ because once you are united with Christ, you don't care about their crap anymore. No. No. You know, I don't care if I ever become a millionaire. I don't want to do these things they want me to do. It just doesn't matter to me. I have my, my freedom. I have my Lord. I have everything that he has given me. 
And I am a possessor of all things in that. And I understand that. And I live that. And I live it right in front of them. You know, God didn't just send me here to be some little wimp that would roll over whenever they shaded their eyes at me or something. <laughs> God sent me I here can't imagine to that. live. And by God, I'm going to live. And I'm going to live the life he gave me. And I'm going to enjoy it. Flaunt as it. much as is possible. Flaunt and it. I do that because I have freedom in Christ. And Amen. quite frankly, I don't give a shit what they think or what they say or what they do. I don't care about their morals. I don't care about their ambitions. They have no I don't morals. care about any of those things. No, they have I no care morals. about the living God. And he is giving Amen. me all that I can deal with and all Amen. that I need to make my life a living joy in the midst of whatever they do. He makes a table for you. are. He makes we, a, a that's way. That's right. We are prey in the midst of our enemies. And we live life in front of them, and it makes them mad because they can't do anything about it. Well, they can try, but then they might not uh, survive. <laughs> As we've seen, we don't ever talk about all that, but uh, Govinda almost does. But, I mean, we don't talk about the pile of bodies behind us. Um, that, oh. th when If people are trying to kill you and god doesn't want you killed they, they might wind up on the on the uh, funeral pyre you know what i'm saying so I, I don't often talk about it i don't i don't take any pleasure in in any of that i don't i'm not i, I love everybody I, I you know all the people i'm talking about in los angeles i wish i could reach them and help them i really do i don't hold any grudge yes. that they that they were uh mean or they tried to bump me off or anything I, i'd be very happy if they come to christ they're going to be at my dinner table you know i mean I, you know just like in the wormbrand case uh, sabina richard wormbrand's wife uh had the same guards that killed her whole family they came to christ and they ended up having a, a christmas dinner together the the, the actual communist yes. guards that killed her family and they repented of it. She forgave them. And they were having Chris. I mean, isn't that a marvelous story? Wow. It is. Only in Christ is that possible. Only in Christ right. is that possible. Right. So I don't want anything to happen to people. That's the whole reason we become, uh, you don't need another preacher out here. You don't need another. No, that's why we do what we do, Jeff. We teach people. We try and open their eyes to prepare right. them for what's right. happening, right. what's about to happen. And all we can do is share the truth that we have. That's all we can do. Pray and share the truth and rely on the power of God. That's all we can do. I, I happen to think that we're, can... we're going to keep going for a while, I think, before, you know, the thing things happen. But what you got to do, I think, out there is this. Whatever God has for you to do, don't worry about what's coming, you know, because a lot of people worry that, oh, it's going to end next week, so I'm going to stop doing everything. Paul warned against that. He said, look... You got to, you know, you got to work to get your food. You know what I mean? You can't just stop and wait for the end. Okay? That's like a big no-no. So you keep going. So we got, yes. you know, I've got uh, what God has for me to do, and I'm going to go do it to the best of my ability, and I'm doing the podcast, and we're doing that, and we're, I mean, I'm not thinking much down the road. I'm just going to, whatever, I'm just going to show up and do whatever it is that day. Um. I think that's all we can do. Uh, you know, if the Lord puts on your heart to, say, write a novel or something in this environment, you go, well, if the world's going to end. I better not write it. Well, maybe you better write it. Uh, if he has for you to go become a nurse or something or be trained to be, I don't know what, something. You go, oh, no, well, you see, the world's going to end, so I'm not going to go to that training class. No, go to the training. We, we need you out there. We need the lambs out amongst them. We don't want the lambs all sequestered. Uh, look, got to overcome that fear. You know, if God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going out there amongst them. And if they don't understand me, and they so that what they don't understand, they tend to swat at it or try to put it down, I'm going to laugh in their face, okay? I'm going to laugh at them, uh, you know, maybe have another martini. <laughs> but I'm going to laugh at them, yeah. you know, and I'm going to keep on my way. You know, gonna just call me a derelict. Call, call me crazy. They hate it when you laugh at them. Well, they're, they they're, hate it when you laugh at no them. There's no other response. These days, it's it's pretty easy to laugh at them because they're so, they make such idiotic comments, you know. And it's, I've, I've seen yes. Bill, Bill Gates. Yes. 
He went to the same school I did, and I think he was a year young. I'm, you know, it's foggy now, the memory, but I, like I said before, I think he was picked on. I, I you know, and I think this is this whole eugenics thing is, is, is his getting even for that day being picked on at, uh, at school. I may be wrong, like I've said, but I mean, I, I, I remember Gates back then, and he was like a nerdy guy, and it was still, still back when the school had like a little military thing going, I think, pretty sure. And then the progressives came in and threw the military out, and they, they said two and, two and two is five, right? They came in, and then the, I went right down the tubes with drugs at that point because I couldn't stand it. So, so, uh, but it's cool. Anyway, so, so, um, Gates now, you know, we and we called him Gates back then. So I must have known him okay because it's you know Gates. You don't call someone Gates if 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 you didn't know them in like in school or something, right? He was Gates. He wasn't Bill Gates. He wasn't Bill. Yeah, it was it was common in school to call guys by their last names. Well, that's how that's so, school too. <laughs> right, this was a military school originally, and then it, like I said, it changed into the sort of uh, I don't even know what it's, it became the mother of harlots after that. But but anyway, he uh, uh, he. I saw him on with Chris Wallace, like maybe, and he looks old. He's not aging. I mean, I look I look at me. I'm aging much better than him. I mean, it's unbelievable the difference. I mean, he's really not looking good. Whatever he's eating or drinking or whatever he's doing, it's not working out for him too well. He should. He always had kind of like a baby face, right? Without he didn't look like he shaved till he was like fifty, right? So the thing yeah. is, is it, it, he was in talking baby talk to Chris, and Trish and I noticed it. It was like he he's talking like a little child, and I, I I'm like, oh my god, this guy, he's regressing back to his childhood yes. w- within this bubble of of well, almost like a, his life is like a psychosis now. It's like a complete yeah. mind controlled totally under controlled um, thing that other people are controlling and making this Gates thing. And, and, and now he's starting to talk baby, not baby talk, but child, childlike, you know, yeah. childlike talk um, showing that he's completely disconnected from reality. I mean, completely a hundred percent, just a total disconnect. I mean, he's talking about global. There's nothing left, Seth. There's nothing left. It's all gone. You it's, know? it's baby they, talk. Eaten. Everything that was of him is gone. All that he has left is maybe those childhood memories of some form of happiness that he thought he had or he tried to seek. But other than that, there's nothing left. That's the problem well, we all find. Once they get so deep into this, there's no way out. And he, unless God reaches out to you, there's no way out. And that's that's the horrifying part of the situation. He, that's why yes, they become so yes, desperate and so yes. hateful. Because they realize at some level that they are somewhere they cannot get out. They are stuck. They are trapped in their own iniquities. And so they reach out and lash out at those who, who, who preach God, those who live with God, those who testify of God, of the light, of the truth. They can no longer see it. So they want to abolish it. They want to smash it. And that's what we see going on today. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Our society. I guess. Gates's way of smashing it would be controlling education and what the kids get for education. Yes. That's what he's into now. That's his thing now. It's like got like the Bill Gates reading list, and he wants everyone to follow him on Twitter to see what he's reading. He's reading authors, you know, that are that are talking about you know climate change and and tolerance and you know basically the the, the whole satanic you know thing, and he's sure. pu- pushing those on the kids right now. So I yeah, and, the entire satanic agenda. And Chris Wallace just lo- oh he's gushing. He, I thought maybe you two should get a room. You know what I mean? I just I mean I I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> Chris looks like he's you know I don't know. I I guess you could speculate on anybody, but the way they look together, it was just like uh, gosh, I got to look away for embarrassment. I mean I don't want to see these two kind of ugly guys go at it. I mean, you know, but it was practically, uh, he, he was worshiping Gates. He was just, uh, you know, everything the guy said where, where when it comes to the subject of Trump, you know, Chris Wallace just slams him every day. And one day I remember when Trump came on, 
they took some fake photos of the inauguration, you know, before people where people were just gathering. Oh yeah, I remember. And then they said, "This is your crowd," and Chris Wallace goes, "I'm sorry, sir, this is Obama's crowd, and this is your crowd." And it was like he wasn't even there at the podium yet. Then we see photos later on with Trump at the podium and the entire mall filled in with people and taken by CNN. So you know that they, they, they're, they're not going to doctor it. And these big photos, I mean, it's just completely packed. And they lied. And Chris Wallace lied. He said, this is your crowd. That wasn't his crowd. That was taken two hours before the inauguration. So, gosh, I just hate that kind of thing. But again... I don't expect anything less from Chris the Satanist Wallace, you know? I mean, obviously, that's his religion, lying, right? So, because he's in the fake news. Yep. So, so he's, he's a fake news that's liar. That's what they do. He lies all day long. Uh, he lies to himself. He lies to his children. I, you know, I can't imagine why anyone thinks this is some kind of stable environment, but uh, I, I, one of my therapies that I do is is I write, and I, I will be writing more along the lines of Glass Backwards that I wrote before, and I, I just feel the need to write extreme in extremes, you know, and that people won't understand my motives, and I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and just do what's in me to do, because I do believe that uh, God wants me to flaunt that, you know, in other words, showing how ugly it really is. Making a comedy of, of of people eating each other, you know that would be funny. You know, black comedy. You know, something. You know, I, I'm just thinking of it now. Just like a dismemberment are us. You know, and and uh, having pictures of prior children, having them stuff like taxidermy, and you know, and maybe having them as stumps without legs and arms, and putting them as artworks around the house. Right? I think that would be. I think that would be apropos. <laughs> No, why not? I mean, own it, baby. Own it. You want to do that sort of thing? You should. That's the one thing they won't do. I want you to put your children on the wall, stuff them like a stuffed animal, and then put them up on the wall, and then just call it normal art and have a cocktail party and see what your friends say. That's what podestas are doing with, I mean, not literally. They don't have the, the guts to do it, literally. But, I mean, you know, why not? I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed, if there's a dead child, let's say someone else killed it, why shouldn't you be allowed, to, if, if the parents were to buy the corpse and stuff it and then put it on the wall? I would think that would bring them extreme pleasure. Isn't that it? I mean, isn't that what they want to do, bring it out in the open? So I'm just a big physician. That's the last thing they want. Really? They want to keep it hidden? Well, that ship has sailed. I mean, I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Put the toothpaste back in the tube now. I mean, it's all over the Internet. You know. Yes, a, a yes, ca- I know. Cannibalism mm-hmm. is becoming a huge topic. So um, I, I, I'm sorry. Just this is So when I deal with horror like that and put it in a humorous context... It helps me to cope with what I know to be true out there. It helps me to belittle these people as idiots and morons uh, by making humor out of what they do. Otherwise, I'm the traumatized, hurt child myself going, oh my God, help me, Lord, I'm in a horrible place. (laughs) They ruined everything all day long. I have no chance of any kind of life. Instead of that... You know, make fun of them, right? And in so doing, yes, and and it, yes, you got it. it. It helps restore us. That you know, when we when we speak of these things, when we when we get in their face, when we challenge them, when we stand for the truth of God, we are remade continually as we do this into the image of God, into the power. The more we stand, the stronger we get. The more we use the power of God, the more proficient we get at it. All of it is a progressive walk. If we stand, it will start its own wave from us as a part of the wave. 
We become integral in this system. That's why we're here, for God's sake. Yeah, we're not here. We're not here just to stand by and eat popcorn and watch the damn movie. No, no, I can't stand. I want to have my own movie. We're here to be a part of it. I'd rather have my own movie. And the truth is, I'm going to control it. (laughs) The deeper you get into the kingdom of God, the tougher it'll get sometimes. But you see, the more power you have when you're that deep, the more God will. What am I looking for? Strength in your own soul. He will take the barbs that they throw and make them strength to you. I want to put a question and out. That's the power that people don't see these yes. days. They just yes. don't see it. So many I see out here that bear the name of Christ, yet they walk around as whimpering fools because they don't understand what it is that they possess. Right, they're, they're, they've got they've got it made, but they're feeling pummeled. Hey, do you remember the scripture? And I, I put it out there to the uh, to the uh, listeners as well, where it says the 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 you know the sound ceased, the dancing stopped, the 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 musical instruments ceased. Uh, it was it like a judgment of God type of thing? Do you do you remember that? I'll find it for next time. But I mean, do you remember that scripture? Yeah. Where the, where the, yes, where the, vaguely, yeah. Where the, yeah, me too, vaguely. Anybody out there, maybe just put it in the chat room. Uh, uh, I just felt led, I will find it. I just can't find it right now. But I mean, if you know the, what I'm talking about, uh, let Trish know. And uh, I want to go ahead and I want to study that. But there's another, there's another scripture that, that people should understand too. And it also comes out of Zechariah. And it says, for there shall be the seed of peace. The vine shall give its fruit, and the ground shall give its increase, and the heavens shall give their due. Amen. And I will cause the remnants of this people to inherit all these things. Amen. That is our, what we possess. If you walk with the living God, you possess all of this within you right now. Right. We are the and owners this is of... Your, this is your walk. Right. We own everything. That's the thing that we're, we're, we're in, we, do. we don't appear to be owning anything, but we own everything. We are inheritors of all things and we are one body. We are one, one, we have one voice. We have one God. We are I am and we are also a royal priesthood and we are, so yes. that puts us as, uh, as we jointly reign with Christ. You know what I mean? So it's like, we are all connected in that way as one. Look at John 17. We're all connected in that way as one. And yet we're, we're joint heirs. Like I say, joint heirs, a royal priesthood. And, uh, we are basically in charge of all things as well. We, you know, it said, well, Jesus is the king. He reigns and we, it's a hierarchy. It's not a hierarchy. It's, it's all one. And we're in that one. Yeah. So you see, that's the difference between Satan likes a hierarchy. In Christ, there is no hierarchy. We are Christ. That's the beauty of it. See, man likes a hierarchy. God is no hierarchy. Man doesn't understand that, so he creates a hierarchy. Who's the top dog and on down? We don't have that. It's not Jesus is the king, top dog, and then, you know, some are apostles and some are, you know, toilet cleaners and some are, you know, it doesn't go down like that. Whatever, yeah. It's Everyone is equal in Christ. Is it? I remember when John MacArthur, and I, this is, I've said this before, but he made this statement, um, which made me very concerned for him. He said that he wants to do everything he can do here on earth to please God, so he's not just some kind of janitor in the New Jerusalem. And yeah. you see what's wrong with that statement. Okay. That shows he has no, has zero understanding of what God is. He has zero understanding of anything. Yet he has a study Bible out there. You can get and study. It's actually not bad too. You know, um, it's uh, it it it, yeah. it it was helpful to me at times. But the thing is, he said this statement fully. You know, just f- just open and innocently. He just said, "I want to do everything I can do here to ensure." My position, I don't, he didn't want to be a lone, a lowly guy. And, yeah. and I felt like telling him, John, we're all the same. And, you know, we, we yeah. are the tabernacle of the living God. It's not about you, buddy. It's not about you, John MacArthur. Yeah, we're, we're all janitors in heaven. We're all jan. I, I <laughs> prefer know. to be janitor, actually. Oh. No pressure, right, as janitor. <laughs> Unless you don't get the toilets cleaned. <laughs> then you're in trouble. 
Oh, boy. I, I was the janitor at the yeah. church before we got kicked out. We got kicked out because of, of my book, Lamb. But before that, uh, we would be very happy to, uh, you know, they wouldn't let me in the worship band. You know, they said not until you become more of a, a, a member of the church, you know, until you, you yeah. know, settle down a little more. And uh, and so I was like, okay, how about Janet? Oh, fine, clean the toilet. And, you know, well, what a mess. You know, we had two bathrooms and all these people going to the bathroom, but fine. I, oh, yeah. I preferred it. You know why? Because I just felt like, you know, I just felt perfect there in, in that being there after everyone left. And here we are straightening the place up. And um, it just felt like it, at that point, I felt the presence of God in that. So, all right. Well, folks, I think we've had a great prophetic talk here. I don't know. It just it's doesn't get fun. It doesn't get better than this. It's, um, you know, I, my utterance about the United States was unplanned. I, in my intellectual mind, I keep wanting to make America great, but that came right out of my guts. That came right out of me without me being able to edit it. Uh, that, 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 you know, and, and uh, the proof, too. The proof came out of me about, you know, being the most powerful country and all that. And, uh, and just whatever we said right there, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's true. I mean, it's in the sense that the wickedness has reached, it has reached the highest heaven. It has reached the almighty. And there's a lot of us who are kind of wouldn't be surprised if the plug gets pulled. But meanwhile, Meanwhile, we're going to go forth with what God had the, 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 going on Govinda's kind of prophetic word, which is let's do what God has for us to do and stop worrying about the big stuff. So I'm going to say right now, well, whatever I said about the United Amen. States and the evil, I'm not going to stop doing stuff because it's so wicked we can't. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go forward, and if, if the whole plug comes unplugged right at that point, then I just... I just go with my boots on, you know, that it, I, here I am doing whatever and then boom. Okay. I, I love it, but I can't just sit there because I know that, um, like, like Kunita was saying, the Lord wants us involved and amongst them. He doesn't That's want right. us sequestered. I know some of us had had a problem becoming shut ins and, and that happened to me with the extreme gangs talking for a while. But you, 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 you gotta find a way out. You know, and, and you can keep blaming them and blaming them and blame. I mean, everyone has excuse. I could make an excuse that I'm just too old to go outside. I'm too old to participate in things. I could say that I'm not going to. You know, I got this old guy here. He's, he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, and he's setting the example. I don't me. know how to quit. Now there's no to stop. <laughs> I'm going to play the uh, Ezekiel 13. Um, I'm still here, false prophet. I'll, a lot of you guys like that song, and I think um, just in um, in honoring our great panel plea or panel ply of false prophets, I think um, in all the screaming and yelling between everybody about when the rapture is, in all I. I just want to say, I watched this one guy, and I'm not going to name his name. I forget his name. But he's going on and on about the blasphemy of the post-trib rapture people. And, and he's proving that they're wrong. And I'm like, dude, talk about Jesus or something. But I mean, this proving they're wrong. And, and, and then they're wicked. They're spreading false info. You know, and I heard that they... They, uh, you know, they eat bugs instead of uh, lamb, or they they eat dirt. You know, they're, they're really evil. No, you, you know, I understand, but I mean, this arguing about when the end is, when the plug is pulled, it, it, it. Look, as far as I'm concerned, the plug has already been pulled. Yes. Okay, so let's move on. You got to move on. And if you look up and you see, you know, a mushroom cloud or something, you see. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's like, hello, Lord. Here I come. 
I love you. Right? You know, because there's people out there that they need to hear the God. They need to see you. You know, you are a person that is of God now. Hollywood, perfect. Get out there. Las Vegas, even better. Right? Sin City, get out there. I'm not saying go gambling and, and whoring and all that. I'm just saying get out there. No. You know, maybe maybe just let you, your light shine. Just let your light shine. Maybe you're like a singer, you know, and you you got like a folk singer thing going, and you, they they need you in a lounge out there. And then what do you while you're singing, something else is going on. <laughs> I'm thinking there's I'm thinking about a woman now that I've seen. I can't remember her name right now, but she was just like one woman singing in a pretty roughhouse place, and you know she's making a difference. You know she's making a difference. All right, my friend. Stay right there, uh, Charles. And, oh, to get to uh, Charles, it's Kunita's Ramble on Spreaker. And he's doing podcasts all the time. So please uh, sign up you know, and, and tune in because he's, he's, he gives words of comfort. And we're especially a lot, of, a lot of what we're both kind of caught up in right now is giving words of keeping us all going. Keep going. You know, yes. this world was not made for you to be hidden in. God made the world for you to be here. He wants his children here. It's not their world. It's not Satan's world. So that's just, you know, it's not witchy, witchy, witchy's world. God made it for his people. And I know it's, it's inverted. I know that. But that's that's the reason why we have to to prove our faith by saying, okay, it seems inverted, but, you know, through faith, I'm going to walk out there. Why shouldn't I? I'm free. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. My Father is the Most High God. What are we talking about here? Cowering and whimpering. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I know it's scary, though. I understand it's very scary when they gang up on you and stuff. I understand that. But... What's worse might be just hiding under a rock somewhere and your life is passing by and you wonder, well, when do I get to do something? I'm not trying to put guilt on anyone. I've I got these problems I've struggled with. My daughter struggled with them. You know, we've all struggled with these things. And um, you just can't let the bastards win. You know, win means to cower, to, 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 to tamp out your light. You you got to let that thing shine. You can't just let them put you in a corner. You just have to pray to God. Lord, I trust in you. I trust you protect me. And you want me to walk out of this corner? I'm walking. My eyes on you. It'll be okay. Believe me, like out in Hollywood, they need, they need help. Out at the uh, Vatican, they need help. <laughs> You know, in uh, the UN uh, rescue missions where they're handling children, oh my God, they need help. Okay, and we'll see you next time. Stay right there, Charles. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. God bless you, each and every one. Bye bye.